So the case study is related on how news uh, outlets reported on immigration in between 2014 and 2019. Um, and uh, it is a, a worth of mentioning because the, the political landscape changed with the rise of Trump and also media started talking about things that Trump brought in the agenda. And this study was performed by the Center of Civic Media in cooperation with uh, Define American, a non-profit uh, uh, media organization that supports uh, immigrants' rights. Uh, and the objective of the study is to, to, to see how media reporting changed over the years and if media used denigrating terms to talk about immigration as well as legacy media started to incorporate in their articles the opinions of uh, um, anti-immigrant think tanks. Uh, and the study was performed uh, almost exclusively through the Explorer. So data were pulled between 2014 and 2018 for uh, four uh, legacy media, New York Times, Los Angeles Times, Washington Post, and USA Today, um, and the, also uh, the time series were compared to other collections such as the partisanship collections we mentioned before that exist on Media Cloud. So two things, to answer the two research questions, uh, researchers searched for two different set of queries. One query was including uh, uh, denigrating terms, as you can see the, on, the, on the right. Uh, and another query was focused on the three anti-immigrant uh, think tanks, Center for Immigration Studies, Number USA, and the Federation for American Immigration Reform. Um, these were the basic queries. Of course, uh, they used other queries, such as general immigration query to get all stories related to immigration. And based on the time series, um, they tried to quantify uh, how the narratives changed uh, among the years. And I'm going to switch here to the uh, one of the queries that uh, media uh, that were used in this study. So I can send you also the, the query in a link. Uh, I can post it in the chat. Okay, um, so let me share it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now you can see the query. Um, you can see on the left uh, the query with the denigrating terms. And you can see that this tilde 10 appears. This is what Aska said earlier, to, if you don't want to just search flood immigrants, for example, together, but you use tilde 10, it searches how many uh, for uh, articles that this word appear, co-occur in, in a window of 10 together. And this query is for the New York Times uh, for, to, and, for four different periods, 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Five times, actually, I'm sorry. You can see on top the different queries. Um, and based on that, uh, the researchers extracted time series and they modeled how uh, media reported. They can switch back to the presentation. Um, Um, and try to see how media reporting changed. And for example, they found that uh, coverage on immigration increased uh, between 2014 and 2018. You can see it on the top plot. Um, and for all four legacy media. So blue one is immigration coverage, green one is the use of denigrating terms. So we have a rise both of immigrant speeds related to immigration and the use of denigrating terms. Um, but also it is interesting how media use these denigrating terms. 
uh, and because it is different from a journalistic uh, stand, if they use the terms without quotation marks or with quotation marks. Uh, because if you use the words in quotation marks, you as an author takes distance from the message and you usually quote somebody else mentioning and you're not adopting this language. So you can see here the two bottom plots are comparable uh, and you can see that uh, it, blue one is now 2014 and green one is 2018 and you can see that uh, to, in 2013 all outlets used these terms much less in quotation marks and that's changed uh, in 2018. They were using them inside quotation mark uh, with an increasing uh, ratio. That means that although media really talked more about immigration, they were also more careful about the language they used uh, in these four legacy outlets. Of course, you can, someone can compare more specifically how that changed over the years. So here we can see how the number of stories in 2014 and 2018 related to immigration containing denigrating terms and the ratios. And we can see that, for example, that for some outlets, this ratio decreased. That means that although media talked about more about immigration, the use of denigrating terms declined as a percentage. And for other media, not. For example, USA Today had an increase in a relative increase in the use of denigrating terms. And someone can look at stories specifically containing um, a specific uh, denigrating terms or not, and someone can identify different narratives. For example, uh, illegal immigrants was used more in 2014, but not, any, not so much in 2018, while other terms like illegal aliens or illegals were used more. Um, so with simple queries and simple statistics, someone can answer really uh, interesting questions and do qualitative analysis. Um, also, um, someone can uh, see further dynamics. For example, uh, the results showed that right and center-right media were talking much, using much more denigrating terms than uh, the other media in the partisan spectrum. Um, also, uh, the study showed that media are mentioning more and more these anti-immigrant think, ta think tanks without also mentioning the context and what's the background of this institution. So they are getting legitimized in the journalistic talk when using, um, uh, they are legitimized by the journalistic articles in a sense. Um, and uh, bis and uh, also what it is interesting is that um, we are going to see it in the topic mapper is that um, some, you can get also how much uh, specific news uh, articles are shared in Facebook. Uh, if I am not wrong, Rahul and Daska correct me if I am wrong. But okay. someone, someone can see, okay, did... Uh, uh, stories with denigrating terms get more viral on social media or not? And in this case, that, that did not happen. But media clouds offer you the possibility to, to, to see such uh, cross-platform effects. Uh, and to, to finish, um, I want you also to think that you can get this time series and do any type of analysis and associate them with any real-time, a real-world indicator you want. For example, to see if uh, an event happened in the world and you can do intervention time series analysis. You can create cross-sectional data between states, countries, or panel data that include also a period and a geographical location um, in them. So it's really, really useful to extract them and Media Cloud does it really, really easily, uh, lets you download the stories.